Okay, good morning, everyone. Hope everything is going smoothly thus far with our new platform here. Um, my name is Dr. Leslie Turner. I'm a dermatic pathologist here in Tampa. And I'm happy to be talking to you today about uh, dermatic pathology. We're gonna start with neoplastic dermatic pathology and then our second half will be um, inflammatory or non-neoplastic dermatic pathology. We'll have a five minute break in between there, in which case, if you have any questions, you can send those over um, your chat and I'll try to address those. And then of course, at the end of the presentation, um, we'll, we'll finish up with, with any questions that you guys have as well. So starting with neoplastic uh, dermatic pathology, uh, this, you know, a lot of these things you guys are um, pretty accustomed to because we're, you know, as a pathology trained dermatic pathologist, we're used to dealing with um, neoplasm. So I think this is the easier half. The second half is a little more challenging, but that's okay because the second half is less tested on. So remember that, you know, this presentation can't cover everything in derm path. So I'm focusing on things that are board relevant because that's really kind of, you know, all we care about at this moment, not forever, but at this moment. So um, starting here, we'll just go through, some of these are really, really quick. Um, here's one of our just classic everyday finds from the skin, good old seborrheic keratosis. Remember, you're just gonna see epidermal acanthosis, uh, hyperpigmentation, elongated, pigmented reedy that are gonna anastomose together and horn cyst, as you see here. So higher um, power example, you can see that the cells are very monotonous there's no atypia and that the horn cyst by definition, the inside of it has just laminated keratin in it. There's a lot of different types of seborrheic keratosis so don't let them you know, trick you. This one's you know, it's not a basal or anything or probably epithelioma of pincus. This is just a good old reticulated seborrheic keratosis. There's also verrucous variants. The first one that you saw is more of just a regular acanthotic variant. Here's the good old actinic keratosis, where you can see that the basal layer of the keratinocytes are kind of enlarged, a little jumbled, and of course there's overlying parakeratosis there, but not full thickness atypia indicating squamous cell carcinoma in situ. So just an actinic keratosis here. Here is an example where actinic keratosis can extend down the follicular units. Um, that doesn't mean that it's squamous cell carcinoma. I do tell them that in reports because it does mean it's more resistant to treatment. Um, because the freeze that they do for treatment often doesn't go down as deep around the follicle, you know, as what it would need to to get rid of the lesion. Um, but it doesn't doesn't equate to squamous cell carcinoma in situ. So this is just a actinic keratosis with follicular extension. Here's an example of keratoacanthoma. Um, remember, this is a subtype of squamous cell carcinoma that from a clinical standpoint arises quickly and then tends to involute on its own. Um, what you see under the microscope uh, is a crateriform type of lesion like this, where you have these um, crateriform architectures diving down into the dermis with lots of keratin. And then there is some atypia, but they have this very characteristic glassy type of very pale, you know, cytoplasmic, pale cytoplasm um, and uh, very, very pink looking cells. This is an example of a very early forming actinic keratin. Uh, keratoacanthoma, where you can see it has kind of this buttress coming up and then diving down into the dermis, it's becoming criteriform. And if we get closer, we, you know, you can see that there is some atypia there. This is actually back to the first lesion, just giving you a little bit higher power of what the atypia looks like in a keratoacanthoma. Again, clearly atypical, enlarged, a little bit jumbled. Um, you can see the parakeratosis in these um, cystic areas rather than orthokeratosis. And um, the type of atypia there is just this really pink glassy type of atypia. As opposed to just a regular, you know, run of the mill invasive squamous cell carcinoma, like what you have here, which is typically not quite so um, glassy pink and doesn't usually have those um, criteriform type architecture to it. Um, and here you can see, this is a good example that you do not have to have squamous cell carcinoma in situ before you get invasion, because really if you just had the surface of this lesion, it, it looks like an actinic keratosis, but clearly there's an invasive component um, in the dermis. 
Here's an example of another squamous cell carcinoma. This one, at least what we have on the screen, can just be classified as squamous cell carcinoma in situ, but recognize this pagetoid appearance. This is a very common appearance of squamous cell carcinoma in situ. And um, what we have to keep in our differential, of course, is gonna be melanoma and Paget's disease. Those three should always come to mind anytime you have an intraepidermal pagetoid type of carcinoma. Um, of course, you can do stains, but if you get this on an exam or if you get this um, you know, on a slide on an exam, if you go high power, you can usually see the uh, intercellular bridges still um, between those pagetoid looking cells. And then in other areas, if you move around, there'll be usually classic areas of like more traditional looking squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Okay, here's an example of just scotal basal cell carcinoma, which I, I think all of you have seen at this point. It often has an epidermal connection. You know, there's a bunch of different subtypes. There's superficial, there's nodular, there's infiltrative, there's micronodular. This is an, ex this is an example of um, superficial and nodular type. And then on low power, what you're looking for, of, of course, the basaloid appearance to the cells, the fact that it has this peripheral palisading with retraction from the surrounding stroma. And then if we get a little bit higher power, you can see there are some areas of apoptosis and there is mucin as well. So if you look in the center of that little cystic area there, that fibrinous looking type material is mucin. Here's another example of a more aggressive variant of basal cell carcinoma. And this is the morpheiform variant. Um, kind of has overlap with uh, the infiltrative variant because the cells are very infiltrative in nature, jagged nests in the dermis, but the thing that makes it more theiform is really that colloidal type collagen that you see going around it. But if we go a little higher power, because you might say, well, how would I recognize this? This, you know, it tends to not have the retraction and such that you get in just a traditional nodular basal cell carcinoma, but if you go higher power, the cells are the same. So it's still basaloid cells, areas of apoptosis, which you can see there clearly, and um, that infiltrative type of appearance, that's, that's what these look like, either infiltrative basal cell carcinoma or morpheiform type of basal cell carcinoma with morpheiform having the keloidal collagen that you see here. Another example of basal cell carcinoma, and this is our fibroepithelioma of Pincus variant. It's a very reticulated variant um, by nature. And the reason that it's reticulated is because it's actually growing down um, the adnexal structures, the eccrine coils. Uh, it grows in internecinos between the eccrine coils. Um, so the things that, you know, this could maybe be confused with, we'll see a little bit later, would be like tumor of follicular infundibulum, but that's going to be way more pink rather than blue, like what you see here. Um, and maybe syringofibroadenoma, which is really not in here. I wouldn't even worry about that as far as, you know, testing purposes. I don't think that they would go there, but that one again is more pink because with fibroepithelioma pincus, even though it has this very reticulated architecture, when you go higher power, you know, you can see the transition from just like those normal squamous cells that are surrounding the eccrine ducts and growing down to the basaloid cells, which again are going to still show areas of apoptosis and have that still, you know, classic basal cell carcinoma look. And then just as a mimicker, I like to throw this one in because you know, with skin, we always wanna to go top down. And I would urge you with every slide or every question, always look top down because if you don't, you're very likely at some point gonna miss something because there's, you know, there's a lot of mimickers. And so here's an example where if you just looked at the top, you'd probably go, oh, this is um, superficial basal cell carcinoma. But you know, if you go top down, looking at the stratum corneum, which has a little parakeratosis, doesn't mean anything in this case, but you know, and then you have um, the little bit of increase in basaloid cells um, there at the dermal epidermal junction, which you could think are maybe um, superficial basal cell carcinoma. But then if you walk your way all the way down, you can see that underneath there's something going on in the dermis. There's this transition from the regular papillary dermis to down in the reticular dermis where it looks a lot more pink and there's an increase in cellularity. And those cells are... Um, the cells of a dermatofibroma and dermatofibroma is 
you know, a classic example of a neoplasm that causes follicular induction. So that's not superficial basal, it's follicular induction. Typically occurs over dermatic fibromas, but can occur over other things. It can occur in things like nevus sebaceous and can even very rarely occur over just scars. Um, but anytime you see something that looks like follicular induction, take a very close look at the dermis. There are some very hypocellular variants of dermatic fibroma. So that should be a tip off that you should look for some sort of transition in the collagen and a little bit of increased um, stellate uh, fibroblastic looking cells in the dermis. Okay, so moving on to some of the benign follicular tumors that I just at least want to touch on for review purposes. Trichelomoma, remember that there is a desmoplastic variant of that. Tumor follicular infundibulum, which we mentioned when we were talking about fibroepithelioma pincus, and I'll show you an example of that. Trichofolliculoma, trichoepithelioma, and there is a desmoplastic variant of that one as well. Pilomatricoma, and then fibrofolliculoma trichodiscoma. I always like to try to keep those together. They, they present on a spectrum and you know the names can get sort of tricky, especially if you don't see these a lot. You know, So since the names can get kind of tricky and easily uh, kind of fumbled up, I would encourage you to, every time you think of fibrofolliculoma or trichodiscoma, think about them together. So starting with trichelomoma, Typically, from a clinical standpoint, it presents as a small, solitary, asymptomatic, little papular lesion that's almost exclusively found on the face. The cells are differentiating towards the outer root sheath, so they have this pale, kind of glycogenated look to them. Um, the tumor itself is sharply circumscribed, has a little bit of a palisaded type appearance, but again, the cells, instead of being basaloid and atypical, like in basal cell carcinoma, are more cleared out and very monotonous looking. And then also you have a thickened basement membrane that tends to surround um, these, these glycogenated cells around the periphery. So I like this example of the picture here because you can see that actually the top um, part of the neoplasm where you see those you know, more infiltrative looking types of strands of cells that can show you what the desmoplastic variant of trichelomoma looks like and how scary it can be. And sometimes if we only get a biopsy of that superficial portion, portion or if you only get a, you know, if you get a test question with only that superficial portion, it can be um, difficult to tell whether it is some sort of squamous cell carcinoma or whether it's something like just a uh, desmoplastic variant of trichelomoma. Um, but the key is, seeing the whole lesion or at least like the deeper parts of lesions because that desmoplastic part very often seems to happen like more towards the surface. And then if you can see the deeper parts of it, then usually get the rest of the picture where you see those glycogenated cells that are more, you know, well-behaved looking, more lobular in appearance in that nice uh, thick basement membrane around them. And here's a higher power of that where you can see the cells look really benign. They're nice and monotonous and you have that thick pink basement membrane um, surrounding the cells at the periphery. So this is the tumor of follicular infundibulum that I, I had alluded to before when I talked about fibroepithelioma of pincus. Um, you know, this is one example. They always look, they can look a little bit different. They can be, you know, more extensive or less extensive than this, but you can see how if it was a little bit more extensive than this, you could certainly think about something like fibroepithelioma of pincus, but the key is pink, 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 right? Fibroepithelioma of pincus, they're basaloid cells. These are very, very pink looking cells. So they look um, benign on higher power, like in the sense that they're just very monotonous looking and there's no atypia, there's really not any pleomorphism or anything, and they're very pink. Okay, and here's an example of trichofolliculoma. And with that, you get one or several dilated um, follicles. And then from that main dilated follicle, you have several other little tiny um, follicles that are in different stages of maturity. They can be kind of rudimentary follicles, or we call them like the little babies coming from the mama. So when you have 
you know, something, you know, somebody might even say like, why is this not pilar sheep acanthoma, which can look like this, which is like a dilated follicle with a lot of acanthosis. It can look a lot like that, but the key is the babies. So if you go a little bit higher power, you 